Well, we're in the final match of Group A, everybody, and it is not the match that I expected. This is the group that had Team Ash and the Bratwurst Boys in, and honestly, most people that looked at the group said, okay, very likely Bratwurst Boys are going to take number one spot, and then it's going to be a battle between the Space Goofs and Team Ash who takes second place, and yeah, boy, were we in for a surprise, because Team Ash actually took the Bratwurst Boys down. So now, this match is going to decide which team takes second and which team takes third place in the group, and only two advance out of each group. We have two groups with four teams each to advance to play in the final round, which is a four-team double elimination bracket. But I don't think that the Space Goofs like this situation whatsoever. So it is gonna get wild here in the playoffs. Now, in addition, we have the bounties. I have talked about them plenty of times in the last qualifier, and I've also shown them during all of this, but I'm gonna show you again. This is our bounty board, so each team has their own bounty board. They only can complete a single bounty once, but if, let's say, the Broadwest Boys, for example, complete the Gazlo bounty, they can't complete it anymore. Any other team still can do it. You can also only complete a bounty per match, so if you're in a best of three or a best of five series, you already completed a bounty, you can't complete another one and you have to win with these so just a couple of rules for the bounties as we're talking about them you can uh, if you're watching this on YouTube right now just feel free to pause the screen here real quickly and check things out but this is essentially what's currently happening here and for now there is a chance that some of the teams are going to play with a bit of a handicap as they're trying to win this but again this is kind of do or die if you lose this match, you are out of the tournament. If you win it, then at least, you know, you have another shot then in the top four. So, is the team really coming in with some of these bounties? Yes or no? That's the question. So, Hansa's in. I mean, we've seen plenty of bounty attempts, by the way. But, yeah, you gotta be careful. I think in the last series, for example, they at some point just stopped with the bounties just because they said, you know what? Let's play this safe. Jojo, Hoga, and Hanzo. We have Mayev and Utha on uh, the other side. Utha as a main tank could be played. Uh, they could go even for a triple heal combo if they think that's a good idea. Keep in mind, they completed a bounty already. They got 50 extra dollars, or they will get 50 extra dollars at the end of the tournament. Because they played a game and won where they didn't play a single healer. They played Abatha to support them at least a bit, but they had no healer, which is the the rule there. Yeah, Rega gets banned, so they're limiting the options of X-Ray. And there's of course also prize money. There's two thousand dollars of prize money split between the top four. In total, the maximum amount of prize money that is being um, given away is three thousand six hundred dollars. Uh, if all the teams complete the bounties that they possibly can. Now, that's obviously the highest number, but the guaranteed prize money for the top four is $2,000, and then each team can boost their own payout uh, by just completing a few of the bounties. And once again, I have to give a big shout-out here to Kevin the Psykiv, who is sponsoring this tournament. He's the, uh, he's the owner of the uh, LAN center in Miami, and he's the one that uh, made the Nations Cup possible that we had in uh, Berlin last year. And guys, once again, I know some of you might have heard that, but we have so many new people coming in. If you have not watched the playlist on my YouTube channel yet with the Nations Cup offline event last year, make sure to check it out. It was by far the best Heroes of the Storm event that we had in the last 6-7 years, and you owe it to yourself to check it out. If you can't watch anything else, watch the Grand Final. But I would highly recommend to watch the entire offline event. We had multiple caster teams, we had an audience there with audience shots, the teams were on site, we had a team from Korea, a team from uh, the United States. It was glorious, it was absolutely amazing. Like, by far the best, so if you haven't seen it yet, check it out. Stukov is in, we have Utha, they could go for the triple healer now. So they could actually do it. And Hanzo is, by the way, ruining some of the potential combos for the Space Goose, but for them it's all about trying to win at this point. So, are they going to go for the triple healer in game number one? Are they trying? Yes or no? And the answer is nope. They're going for Vala, they have the double support, they use Dehaka and Maiev. Vala comes in as the hyper carry for Battlefield of Eternity. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to jump into game number one of the Constellation match. Who is going to advance to the next stage of the tournament? Who's taking the lead in the series? Space Goofs against the Bartwurst Boys. 
Game number one in the best of three. The Bratwurst Boys on the left with Hazops on the Haka. Death Knight on Stukov. Dino going for auto attacks with Vala. So no arrow build to go for the Immortal right away. They have a double support here with Masquerade playing Uther in the main tank position. So they are trying to go for the big fat team fights and then take the opponent down where they stand. So that's the play that they're looking for as X-Ray plays Anduin for the red team for Team Space Goofs. We have Dobby on Chromie, Yasu with Hanzo, Play on Joanna, and Dequaza is playing Hogger in this first game of the best of three series. The final series in Group A. Yeah, so this is where it's all going to end. And I can guarantee you that Space Goofs were watching the last series and they were on Tomb of the Spider Queen just cheering for uh, Team Ash because Team Ash is such a much more comfortable opponent for them than going up against the toughest opponent at least when we're judging from the qualifier so yes going up against the part was boys here is something that they probably didn't expect and when they realized that this was an opportunity uh, was an option they were just like oh god please no so can they turn it around can they make some moves? And that's the big question, and time will tell. But as is right now, they have to really give everything in order to take a lead here in the series and not get dropped out of the tournament. So time will tell what they can actually pull off, but as it stands right now, we have the one minute mark passing. That means the camps are up on the map and the teams are going to make some plays for it. Vala is of course going to try to A, stay alive to keep those gambit stacks up and B, get some hits in. So far, only a single auto attack by Dino. <laughs> Just one. Gets an arrow connected at least. And there's also the blind of Johanna that can slow things down a little bit. But there's a second one. So he's already doubling it. And Anduin dies first. Gets caught by Maev. So, yep, he's the first victim in the game. Babyface is gone. But Dino with two stacks and he is going to attempt to help his team to also break through the wall here quickly. I mean again if you can't duke it out with other heroes and get some stacks then at least take some of the structures out and open these walls up and make sure that you're going to be able to go for the fort as quickly as possible either with the camps or the objective if you get it. But yes they're trying to also get some vision. Dropping the gate is giving you exactly that and with the hatred stacks they are probably also going to use the side wall soon. So he gets some hits in, he's sitting at 9 and is hoping to work on that as things continue. But on top of that, we have them dish out some damage on the fort, so that's early. Top side is also a little bit different because here we have a 2 for one against Hazu. So essentially both of the teams are highly interested at going for structures now, but it seems that the blue team is just a little bit faster with the play that they're making here. Uh, mainly because they are using, as you can tell, uh, the four man at the bottom of the map to put Vala into a spot where they can go straight for the fort. The same happens now at the top because the Haka was forced back. So the forts are likely going to fall on both sides and when that happens it usually means that the game in general just gets accelerated. Now the forts have not been destroyed completely. Top has taken some more damage than uh, the red team's fort at the bottom of the map. But yeah, exchanges like this just accelerate the game. One of the healers already gone so Stukov is out and the attacks are coming. There is a lot more damage against the Immortal for the red team. I mean, they just have the better numbers there. Vala didn't go into an arrow build, Hanzo is ready, Chromie can poke from a distance. So there's a lot of really good assets for the Space Goofs when we're talking about just sheer Immortal damage and how quickly they can take it. Now, that doesn't mean that you're winning the game because what the Bratwurst boys are doing is they're saying, guys, we're going to win team fights. We're going to go in there, we're going to win the team fights, and then we're going to take the objective later. Normally that means that at least the first one, two uh, Immortals go over to your opponent. Not really unlikely that you're going to get all done, but the fight is already coming. Vala hasn't died so far, and she is getting damage in. Yeah, might be in a bit of trouble here still. Heals are there. Okay, gets the heals, and Dino! Oh, clutch, my friend! Yeah, very, very clutch. And well, there it is. The kill, Vala goes down, and that is attack speed removed from her. The Gambit quest has been at least partially removed. Uther dies too, and that's three kills to one. Um, team? 
Space Goofs have won the objective, they've gotten three kills, and yes, this is still early, and you can argue this is a late game comp that they're playing, but what is happening? Could Can you imagine if all of a sudden the Bratwurst boys lose this one? How insane would it be if the Bratwurst boys drop out of this tournament in the group stage? That would be insanity. Now, way too early to do any of that. To spec Well, it's not too early to speculate. Way too early to make any definitive judgments here. But just think this through for a moment. That would be nuts. Now, the fort at the top gets destroyed. So, they have the additional kills. The Quasa is just a monster. And I could see some hoarder pulled light bomb engage plays by them, by the goofs, trying to take Vala down later. So, uh, yeah, three kills to one. Leading experience on the other hand for the Bratwurst boys. Let's not, let's not uh, ignore that. But it's also the fall at the bottom of the map. It's down to 50% HP. So they can bring this back here, but they are not just taking the standing. Vala now with a few more hits that she brings in. They are going to get that fort as it seems. And the Harker at the top has been destroyed. Yeah, the Haga is down top side, so now they can start to move down to the bottom of the map, but the fort has just been uh, completely wrecked. Play gets away. The double support gives, of course, a lot of sustain to the blue team, but we are definitely in for an interesting ride, aren't we? Yeah, kind of bonkers. <laughs> I also I imagine they lose game number one, just as if it's game number one. Let's not even talk about the series. Let's, let's talk game one. How would the team feel already being down, uh, at some point just being down, you know, after dominating every single qualifier? Yeah. Anyways, it is what it is. For now, we have four kills to one. Even experience, one four destroyed on each side. A little bit more damage done against the, the blue team structure, specifically the bot lane fort that we highlighted earlier. And as both teams are trying to get to level 10, we are going to get with that very quick damage again against the Immortal, as you already can see. And then, of course, the next question is going to be what else can they pull off with this? AKA, are we going to get those combo plays with heroic abilities, yes or no? Because they're winning the Immortal race. This is just a given. If it's a straight up race, it's going to be won by the red team. But this is not the composition that the blue team is going for. The blue team is going for a composition that is supposed to do something very different. Blue team's composition is supposed to just murder everybody else where they stand. So, yeah. That's their job. But here comes level 10. And we get no Horder pulled, but we get the Light Bomb. So, uh, they're still going Shockwave with Hogger. And still, of course, move in. Uh, here's the Light Bomb already. They try for Vala. And there's the Shockwave. Vala in the corner. Gets heals and still dies, and so does Maiev. Uther is dead, that's three heroes gone. Seven kills to one, and the Haka dies too. What? I mean, what? Guys, they're getting wrecked. They're getting absolutely wrecked. That's insane. Eight kills to one, and they are crushing it. The fort at the bottom of the map is 100% gone. Bratwurst boys are in trouble, and in a lot of it. Again, both forts destroyed, and the immortal hasn't even started. Now, it's only the second one. It's not like it's a 25-minute immortal. But they're going to open that wall up, and they're going to get some damage on the keep, likely. It's not going to be a lot, but it's going to be a bit. So, I am not sure what's happening here, but I can tell you that the Bratwurst boys are not going to be happy about what's going on. There's the next attack, Light Bomb, Arrow! <laughs> Masquerade! How is he alive? <laughs> well, he isn't. Light Bomb stun into Hanzo Arrow, and the keep is now down to 50% HP. Nine kills to one. What the hell am I watching? It was already unbelievable when Team Ash took out the Bratwurst boys in the last series. I mean, great performance by Team Ash. I don't want to belittle that in the slightest. They play fantastic. You could, I argued at some point that they could have even won with a 2-0. But now we have an entire level lead for the Space Goofs. Bratwurst boys are in more than a bit of trouble. 
And this is disastrous right now for the blue team. Now this isn't over yet, they can still come back here. But currently this is bad news. And if the next Immortal also goes over to the red team, or the next team fight ends the same way, then I wish you a lot of luck. Because you're gonna need it. 23,000 damage for Hogger. The Quasar is beasting it. Absolutely crushing it here. The man has no sense of style, as you can see on his mount, but hey, he's killing it. Like, really? Green? Like, <laughs> first of all, the mount is shit. Second of all, the color is shit, too. But yeah, so. Level 13 talent advantage. Objective is coming up. Vala also 66 stacks. Yeah. Nothing crazy. And yeah, off we go. So I am more than intrigued on what's going on here. I am just looking at this and I'm thinking about how much the space could have felt when they saw that they had to go up against the Bratwurst boys and not against Team Ash. If they could choose, I can tell you which team they would have chosen. But now they're in game number one and they're just like, all right, boys, let's just buckle up and let's just do whatever we can. So, yep, the poke is soon coming from Hanzo. He's already trying to take the Immortal on a little bit. Uh, can they get a hit in? Divine Shield. Holds out. Divine Shield on Vala. That's already used. Good save. Nice move, at least initially. Damage coming in. Vala vaulting forward. Trying to get the kill. Jojo, Jojo. And the Light Bomb. Getting into the choke point here. Hanzo jumps out. Is able to get away. And the arrow connects hard! The shockwave! And he wants to kill on Death Knight and barely misses out on it. Yeah, that was nearly another kill. Dayquaza. A god amongst man on the side lane. Yeah, but now Jojo is going a little bit too deep and goes down here. They are at least getting dark as a trade, so it is a one for one trade. And the blue team is low, which allows them to push forward, push for the Immortal, and get the lead on this bad boy once again. Top side, that's an issue. Bottom of the map, similar picture, but there are more catapults here. So Vala has to move in, they give up the halftime show, and she has to deal with all of this. Top side is opened up, that's another fort that is exposed. And the Immortal position, now a little bit better. But yeah, Hogas are already down at the bottom of the map, is dealing with this too. Not too much of a deal here. Catapult is gone. Shaman is about to be destroyed. And now they can still poke. But yes, they are still poking this down. And the blue team, if they're not defending this, they are going to lose the race once again. And they're trying to defend. They're realizing it as well. It's half a level until level 16. That's the next problem. They're running from one problem into another. Yeah. Divine Shield out again. Good play that they made it, by the way, because if not, then this could have been the end of him. Light Bomb was already there. Vala is still poking. Vala is actually doing a decent amount of damage, but I'm not quite sure if it's going to be enough. The poke is still happening. Yep, they're firing away. They want this one. Hanzo might have to jump out. Gets another arrow set connected, but still. Arrow, and he hits hard, but Chromie dies. The arrow hits hard. Chromie dies. Can Hanzo poke again? He needs to poke a little bit more if they want that immortal. They're super close to grabbing it. Super close, but they are five versus four now. They don't have level 16 yet, and Yasu is alive. Oh, where is he? Dino, they can't get the kill. They can't get it, finally. And dem da dum da 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 dum da dum Play is on a mission, and T takes it. They try for the Quasa, beautiful Tong from the Haka, and Hogga is gone. That's three heroes eliminated. The Bratwurst boys are finally getting their shit together. So, yeah, Dino's at the top. They gotta stop the Immortal. This is the third one taken. We're 13 minutes in, but they have the tools now. They have the tools. There's no push coming with it. So, yeah, top keep is taking some damage, I guess. But they're not gonna lose the keep here. And the red team cannot do a whole lot. So, that was about as good as it could get. Damage is gonna be there, but it's not gonna be enough to really be... I mean, it's a, it is a concern that both of the keeps are taking damage. But this could have been so much worse. This could, argue, this should have arguably been a keep. So they stay alive to fight another day, and brought it back a little bit. But they are definitely. Oh, they, I, I don't think they expected this. This is a lot harder than they probably imagined it would be. Vala is at 100 stacks. I mean, you guys, we're 14, 15 minutes into the game. 100 hits doesn't sound like much. 
Jojo, of course, has blind that she can play around. Vala was also attacked very heavily, and she died two times. That's 10% of the attack speed gone that she gets through the Gambit stacks. But yeah, it's now 5 kills to 10, 17 to 17. Structural advantage still goes to the space goofs, but the situation is much more even now. It's much more even for the time being. So yeah, they go again. Light bomb! And they switch targets to the end. He's just gone. Deleted. Ultralisk. Ultra low. Ultra dead. And gone. And Yasu falls. Yasu at least falls. Dino is doing the best he can to keep them alive. His kill was big. Uther gone. Maiev gone. But at least they were able to take down Hanzo. But there is still a bit of poke against the topside keep. Now they're trying to steal the camp away, as it seems, and of course the next Immortal is also spawning soon, TM. So, Space groups with the small advantages that they get for themselves and now try to use it. Now the red team is still... they gotta deal with this. Blue team wants to have a say in that. I'm not quite sure if they can. Like, this is a 4 versus 3. This is a bit of a ballsy play to just sit there and try and make them, make them move. It allows Valor to get some stacks, but you also have to be sure that she doesn't die, or you're gonna be in way more trouble. So Hanzo isn't there, so the damage is a little bit limited that they can dish out. And they're also falling back to just get their own camp. They stole it away from the opponent, now they can take their own. Dino already realizes that and they want to go for the Immortal first. It's a 5 versus 5 on the map, but once they set this onto the top lane, they will have additional pressure against the top side key. It's a wild game, it's a wild first map between the teams. So, yep, here we go. Right now... There's the play. Again for my F. Again for Ultralisk. Shut him down. Shut him down quickly. Damage. Yeah. First one didn't connect. Second one. Shockwave. Divine Shield to counter it. Oh, and the arrow. Bliss Shield. <laughs> Can they YOLO it out? Bliss Shield not used yet. There's the chance to get the kill. And Uther is dead again. Masquerade is just dying. The Bliss Shield is out too. They go for Hazu again. Uther died five times already. Look at Hazu. Hazu's gone. No chance. He gets crushed. That's a five versus three. Five versus three. Easy halftime show for them. Maiev is already moving to the top since they realize they can't go for the fight here. They have to defend the topside camp instead. Halftime show is over. And this could be a big immortal. And this is the fourth one in a row that they would get. Four immortals in a row and a big shield to boot. Hogger defends the bottom of the map and it's bananas. Absolutely bananas. There we go. It gets worse. Guys, they're getting level 20 with this. They get level 20 with this push. I think that's game. I mean, honestly, unless the Bratwurst boys dominate the fight now and somehow get a quick kill, this is game. 1-0 for the Space Scoops is uh, the most likely outcome here. I mean, you shouldn't count them out yet, I guess. If they sync it up well, they have a chance. But this is going to be so difficult to stop. 18 minute Immortal with what is this? 80% shield? 75% shield? Dino's doing his best here. Level 20 talents on the other team. I, I just don't see it. I don't see it. Bala, Divine Shield to save her. Shockwave. And they're barely staying alive. They're just being driven away. Hanzo's arrow connects. And that is probably the end of Masquerade again. Masquerade, he's trying to get away here. Dainu is low and has to deal with the Quasar. And the Immortal is already on the core. Hazu. <laughs> okay, Vala dropping. I mean, yeah, that's a good reason to pause the game. But I really don't see it. How are they defending this? Like, tell me. The shield is still there. The core has basically lost its shield already. We have level 20 talents for the opponent's team. Vala, when Dainu is back, what is he going to do here? He needs to go up here, heal, and then come back. In the meantime, the main damage shield is Ultralisk. He's on 50% HP. Unless they are somehow able to now kill the Quasar or kill uh, Chromie, I just don't see it. It's not happening. So, there it is. Unpaused. They can't get the kill. Dino with half HP goes back into the fight. Dead now. This is game. GG. This is game. Look at the Immortal. He's wrecking this. <laughs> the Space Scoops, they take the lead. They take the victory against the Bratwurst boys as we are heading into game number two in the final series of the day. GG, well played. 
Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Caldo TV. Well, the space goofs are in the lead and we are all of a sudden in a situation where the Bratwurst boys could drop out of the Banshee Cup in the group stage. Uh, yeah. Kind of wild when you think about it. We're talking about the team that has literally won every single qualifier that they participated in. I think they participated in all but one? One, two? But yeah, they, they won at least four qualifiers. I think they won five. So, it's bonkers. It's kind of crazy that we're here in this spot. That strategy did not work for them whatsoever. And I can guarantee you that there is going to be two teams right now that do not think about the bounties anymore. Because this is it. You lose this series, you're out of the tournament. That's just what it is. So, Tomb of the Spider Queen is our map. Chosen by the Space Goofs. Blue team went for first pick, first ban. Now we got Rhaegar banned, Lucio banned, so they're both targeting supports. But it's wild to me that we're in the spot in the first place. Space Goofs are ahead. There is so much pressure now. I mean, think about it. If you're the Bratwurst boss, you make one, one mistake. And you're gone. You can argue that the drafter didn't work for them. That was just something where like, yeah, mm -hmm, okay, we tried the double support Vala, it just didn't work for us. But yeah, from here on out, it is just making sure that everything is lined up perfectly or they're gonna be in uh, a world of pain and drop out of the tournament. Jamgrad starts us off. Great pick, of course, for the map. Hans was not available anymore. He was already played in game number one. So Jungrid is great. Get those grenades in, get those interrupts going, make those big plays. And for the space goofs, we start with Urel. Strong pick for Dequaza. He's been crushing it on Hogger. I mean, really. He's been absolutely destroying it with Hogger on the last map. A huge part on why they were able to take down the Bratwurst boys in the first place. So him going for his pick very early on makes perfect sense here. They banned Blaze. They didn't want the opponent to pick Blaze for Bunker. That also removed it from a possible pick for Dequaza. But he goes straight for Urel, which is going to have a massive impact. I mean, she is insanely powerful in the right hands. Sylvanas also similar. Hazops goes for one of his comfort picks and Masquerade with Garrosh. All right, Masquerade going for Garrosh. Hazops gonna go around on the map. <laughs> this is, by the way, also the map that uh, the Bratwurst boys lost against Team Ash. Just saying. Maybe one of the reasons why they actually go for it. So, yeah. But again. What do we have now? Final bans are coming in. Anna gets banned. Yeah, I think that they either misclicked Jojo as a ban, by the way, or that they just didn't really care. But that was not a ban that was needed. Obviously, she got played already, so wasn't really available. Anyways. <laughs> I'm insanely curious. I really want to see what's going on with this now. Because this is just wild. I did not think we would be in a situation like this. I really didn't think that it would be possible. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, uh, setbacks happen and, like, upsets too. I talked in the, the qualifiers, at the final qualifier, I think I talked about it, that for the Bratwurst boys, it would be this dominant is amazing, but at the same time, it matters what happens in the playoffs more than what happens in the qualifiers. And now we're in exactly that spot, and I honestly didn't really think we would be, because they've been so dominant. And it's one thing that you lose against Team Ash, you know, on the final map, but then also right away losing your first map in the consolation match here, and being just one loss away from being eliminated from the tournament, it's just crazy. Like, they would be rank 5-6... In, uh, in the in the uh, yeah in the standings, and they would essentially walk away with only the fifty dollars that they made by completing one single bounty. They got Kane and Tracer. All right, Tracer, Junkrat. Woo! Yeah, Malganus for play. <laughs> crazy, crazy stuff. Tomb of the Spider Queen, everybody. Banshee Cup playoffs when Group A 
We're heading into two more Spider Queen, and this might actually be the last map of Group A. Can the Bardwars boys force the third map? Well, we're gonna find out right now. Final pick, Carrigan. Not for Ultralisk. No, no. For the Space Goofs. Let's go. Let's see what they can do with it. Is this the end of the Bardwars boys in the tournament? Or are they gonna force the final map of the series? Game number two, the Bratwurst boys with a back to the wall. Death Knight on Deckard Kane for the second map for Tomb of the Spider Queen. Ultralisk on Junkrat. Masquerade is playing Garrosh. We have Dino on Tracer and Hazorps is playing Leoric. The Space Goofs in the lead. Match point number one for them with Play E on Malganus. The red team playing Dobby on Kerrigan. We have X-Ray on Malfurion. Yasu on Sylvanas and Dequaza. One of their biggest weapons here is playing Urel. Let the show begin. Which team is victorious here? Which team makes the big play? Well, we're gonna find out right now. Level one, the Emerald Dreams. Yeah, the entire team is dreaming. They're dreaming of the next stage of the playoffs. And for uh, the Bradwurst boys, a little bit of a nightmare. That might be delivered by Malfurion. Oh. That's a kill, and that is a nice start. Bradwurst boys with a quick kill. They're getting Kerrigan. That was all sponsored and set up by uh, the Junkrat. And they get a second one. All right, there we go. At this point, they're just coming in saying like, all right, let's just shut them down quickly, get some quick kills, and make sure we're not falling behind once again. So nice moves, I, I, I like it, I like it. They are coming in, swinging, it's two kills, super early on in the game, gives you a little bit of a lead, nothing too fancy, but it makes a statement. <laughs> so do the sprays, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, spray game, always on point. And you can see the confidence of the blue team is already back. Get two kills. Immediately confident again that they can make the moves here. Dequaza has something to say about it, but yeah, he needs also to be careful. And has a really nice follow-up too. I mean, the entire time, Garrosh throw, Deckard Kane, slow, um, Leo coming in with the slow as well. Yeah, the the Bartwurst boys are a little bit angry right now. They are trying to make some plays here. They... We're looking at this and we're like, wait guys, we are not losing this, are we? So they are trying to very quickly establish some dominance in this one. And particularly Masquerade with Garrosh is just moving around. Let's face it, he very quickly became the punching bag in game number one. Uther did not have a good game. Not at all. Like He got crushed time and time again. So it was really tricky for them to uh, to do anything there. But as is, the party continues. So the attacks are coming. They are looking to see what they can do with the camps. We have the Siege Giants taken by the red team. They've taken their own Bruiser camp. They're still chasing Urel at the bottom of the map, but play is now also attempting to assist. They Quasar playing with the vision and is able to escape. Uh, same might not be true for play though. So he came in to help De Quasar out, but now he's the one that gets attacked. But I like how Dequaza played the entire time with the vent here and he played with vision as best as he could to make sure that targeting was really tricky for the other team. Another quick play. Hazu, careful. Needs to be cautious on this one. Two kills to zero. And on top of that now, we are also looking at the mid lane uh, push with the camp. And the aura. And it's basically already defeated, but they take their own bruiser camp now, I suppose, in order to just bring this back. Now, gems a little bit ahead for the blue team. They have a slight lead there. We have the next move being made there as well. Level 6 is kicking in on both sides. Still very even, but we haven't seen a kill yet for the space goofs. So they're still working on that. I mean, they have the combos. You can just come in with Malganes, put somebody to sleep. They got, uh, they got Kane, Malfurion follows up with the root and then Carrigan uses the combo. You can see the attempt there, but Masquerade was able to move away from it. He also has, of course, Indomitable. Dobby! Okay, somebody gave him a sock. We're fine. He gets out. He didn't die. Saves those 20 gems that he's been holding. That is not something that you want to lose. 20 gems this early in the game this is quite a big amount. Have to, of course, be a little bit careful that at least if you die, somebody is able to pick it up and is close to you. But, yeah. Now, either way, uh, play is getting a bit of an attack. We get the Emerald here on level 7. 
And yeah, they go again for my guys. Careful. But the web weavers are coming down. So they can't get another kill against Morganus. He's still able to get out. But the web weaver wave, they've been doing well. Two kills, control the turning point, make sure that your opponent doesn't secure too many of their gems. And that worked beautifully well. So instead, we're now having the push coming with the first web weavers. And this is already starting to hurt them a little bit. I mean, Sylvanas is obviously in a position where she can easily start defending against this, and she will try and do that. But the push is there. We have at the front Garrosh that is going to make it difficult for them to engage properly. Is always going to look for the next target that he can throw back and uh, start to attack. Even looking now for Dobby at the top. So yes, Masquerade moving in. Always had a chance to go for Indomitable and make that engage. But they are breaking through the wall. They have Leo at the bottom of the map against Urel. Doing the same thing, escorting Web Weavers in as we speak. And in the middle, yes, the wall destroyed. The fort has taken damage. Doesn't get killed. Ultralisk for a little bit of a drive-by shoot as he drops a few grenades on it. So they are attempting to poke it further. But with 69, 70 gems, 71 gems now in their hands, the red team hasn't delivered a single gem yet. Not one. Now, they again try for Dobby. And Kerrigan... Kerrigan is their prime target now. <clears throat> Once you shut her down... It's going to be so much harder for the Bratwurst boys, uh, sorry, for the Space Goofs to get aggressive here. There are a lot of this hinges on Kerrigan. She's the one following up with additional stun combos. She's the one making a couple of plays there. Now we got tw two kills to zero still, but level 10 should be in the hands of the Bratwurst boys a bit sooner. But it's a very cautious game, specifically from the Space Goofs as they're attempting to turn in. They delivered 41 gems now, they're nine short of getting their first Web Weaver wave. But it also doesn't change the fact that in just a few seconds we're going to have the Bratwurst boys with enough gems for another turn in on their own. So, Warlord's challenge is in, we got the taunt, we got also the level 10, which could allow them to force a fight here. Leo within Tomb, is he gonna drop it? Chaos from Alfurion drops the Entomb, where's the follow-up? Yeah, not enough follow-up just yet. Deckard Kane, stay a while and get wrecked. But the only body that gets wrecked is him. The old man is down and that's the first kill for the Space Goofs. First one they were able to lock in. So they get a kill. Siege Giants at the bottom of the map are starting to destroy everything here. And with everything, I mean, one of the towers is already down. But Carrigan's in the middle. All their forts are so low. I mean, every single fort is just low. As long as it's not destroyed, it's not a problem. They're trying to turn in now. And... Well, instead, the attempt to go for Garrosh. Very quick retreat by Dobby, but at least he forced out Indomitable. So that's the cooldown that Masquerade burns that he doesn't have back for a bit. He's on a 60 second timer, so we'll see if in that time frame they can come in and try and force another attack onto him. I mean, it's always the question, how do you play the cooldown game too? Like, how much can you actually accomplish in that time frame there? But the attacks, they still keep coming. They're trying to go for Hazu, and as they are forcing him back with the mind control, they get their own turn. And so now Web Weavers for the red team. And therefore, the chance to start some payback. Experience, dead even. Kills, nearly the same. Very poor game in regards to kills, by the way. Only three at the eight minute mark. You can really tell that both of the teams are super careful right now. There's a lot on the line for the Bratwurst boys more so than for the Space Goofs. If the Space Goofs lose, they at least have another map where they have a chance. For uh, the team in blue, very different situation. And here comes the Sylvanas factor. Oh yeah. Leverage Sylvanas as best as you can. They're going through the middle. Jungred is defending at the top. Leo down at the bottom of the map. Mind control into stuns, roots and the whole shebang. Garrosh is dead and so is the fort. So, with the first objective already, big plays made and they could theoretically try and go up to the bottom or the top and get a bit more. Another turn in is also in the cards. They have 76 gems. Easy one for them. They have actually eh, not quite superior numbers, but they definitely have enough to get that easy double turn in and that's exactly what they're getting now. Double turning is there and they're going for the camp. So they got the kill against Garrosh. That was huge. 
And they were able to take out the opponent's fort, but only one of them. Second set of Web Weavers, second attempt, and the question is, how much damage can they do now? What can they do with the second blow? Guys, Bratwurst boys, they gotta defend. They gotta throw everything in that they have. So, Twilight Dream for Malfurion is causing the blue team some nightmares when it gets properly executed. Level 13 talents for both. Carrigan gets attacked. Combo attempt. Nice follow up. And she jumps out. Dobby knows that he's the target. And he uses all the mobility that he has. They go for the old man. And he gets saved by Garrosh. Good move by, De uh, by, by Masquerade. That was an important one. Yeah, play Fell Flames. Uh, Fell Claws. And gets immediately out. Yeah, Gul'dan is not in this game, no. You haven't missed anything. They try for Hazu. Bottom fort is gone. Can they get him? That's 19 gems that he has. And the answer is, yeah, I think they can get him. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have anything. So that's 19 gems gone. Can you pick him up? Ultralisk has 20. And he got 10. They lost 9. They lost 9 of the gems. And they lost their bottom fort. So two turn-ins, two forts gone. To be fair with you, I think once that the Bratwurst boys deliver their own turn-in, they are going to pick up the top of the mid lane fort. So that will equalize the situation on the map. Currently, though, there is an advantage for uh, the Space Goops. And they have taken the lead in experience as well. Yeah, Dequaza is turning in. He had 10. Can also still monitor this a bit and see what's going on there. Yeah, they got Kane. is talking about monitoring. Is also paying attention. Siege Giants are now taken. This is dangerous. This is dangerous stuff. Guys, it's honestly the suspense kind of killing me. Can the Space Goofs do this? Bratwurst boys out of the tournament? Is that a possibility? Is that really a thing? There's the turn in. Attempt. Gets shut down. But yeah, it's, it's just wild. The situation in and of itself is just wild. Sylvanas has pushed this out heavily. Blue team has Web Weavers coming. And I think this will destroy two forts. It has to, right? Mid lane, top lane forts are so low. Unless heroes now die on the blue team side, I think that's just it. They have level 16 though. That's the advantage. Level 16 is ready. Maybe they can do something with that. Because that's a half level lead. Another wave is being burned down quickly by Yasu, so those web weavers are very much alone. Maybe they're not gonna get the where the, they, well, maybe they don't get the middle at all. Or after all. Twenty thousand damage for Sylvanas, twenty-four thousand for Tracer, and yes, the top side fort is of course gone. Leo is still at the bottom of the map, so that's good news for them as well. But this fort is gone and yep, they're losing a little bit more. So this is the comeback moment for uh, the Bratwurst boys. What a day! What a group! Bonkers. Yeah. They're gonna go for the fort in the middle regardless. So yeah, two forts gone on each side. Even in structures. And pretty much even in experience as well. Not really a big gap or anything between the two teams any longer. So yeah, moves are being made. And, well, let's see. Here it is. The next play for a potential turn-in. Both teams have enough. So they could go for it. But are they? Well, there's already a tomb being used. Okay, they're doing their best. And grip tire! Oh! What about Hazu? He's down! Hazu is dead. He gets destroyed. And, oh, God. Now they go for oh, play. He's gone! Twilight Dream from X-Ray, but Tracer hunts him down, runs into the roots. Malfury and Kerrigan all gone. Deckard Kane is dead. Equaza is moving in again. He's trying to get another kill, but just can't. And Yasu is about to fall as well. Or is he now? Ultralisk is low. <laughs> He's dead. Tracer is still alive. What is this bloodbath? 75 gems in the hands of the red team. And boys, the blue team lost nearly all of them. Well, maybe not all of them, but like, they have only 37. There's no way for them to get another turn in. And all the gems were recovered, essentially, from the red team. So, once again, in a stellar position. This was way better. Way better for the Space Goofs at the end of the day. As all the dust settles, 
It's so much better for them right now. They have the turn. They have 80 gems. That's not only a turn in. That's half of the next one too. And a half level lead on top of it. So, damn. Just damn. Dino down at the bottom of the map now. And poof. Oof. <laughs> this is just crazy. This is seriously crazy. That fight was all over the place. Dino is trying to pull off whatever he can here. 56 gems for the Quasar. He delivers. That's the turn in. There it is. Mind control! Indomitable gets used, but Masquerade still dies! This is horrific for them! This is a disaster! This is an absolute disaster! Garrosh dead half a level until 20! Half a level and they're gonna be 20! And they're missing Garrosh for another 40 seconds! Carrigan is looking for another kill! Play looks for another engage. Sylvanas is burning minion waves down to escort the web weavers even deeper and ensure that the top fort falls 100% and there's level 20. And of course to get the experience for them. Oh my god. If the Pradwas boys lose but also lose with a 2-0. That... It, 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 what? Insanity. What am I watching today? What is happening here? Seven kills, two, five. The keep at the bottom of the map gets attacked. The fourth at the top is already lost. The keep in the middle is definitely gone. Garrosh is back and the first keep is destroyed. Wall at the bottom is opened up. The attack at the top is happening. And the fight in the middle is breaking out. Chrysalis on Carrigan. Oh, the taunt. Taunt from Garrosh. Garrosh. Low with the ult from Decker Kane. The pain bringer. And no, he's dead. This can't be happening. Are you shitting me? Is this really what's going to happen here? Are they really? They lost the keep. They lost two keeps. They lost three keeps. How is this possible? What is going on? What? What am I watching? This guys, you've seen the playoffs. You've seen these tournaments. They won everything. Everything. They have nothing left. Nothing. There's the turn in! They're turning in and they're faster! They're turning in and they're faster! Another web beaver wave! This is a death blow! This is insane! This is the biggest upset that we had in months! Everybody said just give them the prize money! Just give them the money! They're number one! Why even let them play? Look at this team! They are actually losing this! Can they go and kill Carrigan now? She bolts away. 20 versus 20 talents. Web Weavers at the bottom. At the top. They're going for a kill. They're trying for. Trying for Death Knight. There's the taunt. Urel is dead. Urel is dead. Urel is gone. Can they follow up on this? They are fighting tooth and nail now. They have to. This is the moment. They need to pull something off here. But Hazu. Oh, Hazu dies. Hazu is gone. Hazu has gone and the core is already getting attacked. First Web Weaver wave is coming in from the bottom of the map. Next one from the middle. At the top it's moving as well. I cannot believe what I am watching here. They lose Death Knight. They, it's un, it, unimaginable. I cannot believe what is happening here. Guys, the Bratwurst boys are out of the tournament. They didn't make it past the group stage. Team Ash and the Space Grooves advance from Group A. Utter insanity. What an upset. Congratulations to the Grooves.